So why did it work? All right, so my theory initially was ketosis, that these children would be in higher ketosis than any other modified Atkins diet study. Wrong. And this is interesting what this tells us a little bit about why these diets, all of these diets may work. So ketones were no higher at one month than any other modified Atkins diet study. 80% uh, had high ketones at a month. Historically, we see that in 75%. We also interestingly found that their serum ketones were similar to, again, any other study that's been out there. And interestingly as well, at month two, without the keto cal, no change in ketones. Really, if anything, uh, their ketones may be bumped up a little bit at the second month. Uh, and it also didn't seem to correlate with seizure control. So not clearly the answer. That was my theory, was that the keto cal would boost their ketones. Not true. Any other ideas in the audience? We were puzzled. We knew it worked, we didn't know why. Time. Elizabeth. Huh? Yeah. It could be just time, but this was again, this is comparing this study to all the other studies. Yeah, and the blood sugars were no different. So one of our thoughts was, well, you know, maybe it's just making the diet easier, more tolerable. These kids were sticking to it, they were more compliant. More consistent through the day, though? Like, What's that? More consistent through the day. Sometimes the ups and downs that maybe. We couldn't look at that. That's an interesting question. But if you could do their ketones like every hour or something. Yeah. We didn't do that. That's a good question. Elizabeth was asking maybe just sort of, to, you know, sort of, you know, keeping the ketones stable as opposed to the ups and downs. It's possible that that was better. It may have been with the shake. We didn't look at that. To so tolerability we looked at, that also wasn't the answer. Okay, so we looked and said, was there a correlation between how well they liked the diet and how well they liked the keto cal? No. Was there a correlation between how well they liked the keto cal or the diet and how their seizure control was? No. We looked at sort of, we didn't really look at tolerability in any other study in the past, but you looked and see, well, you know, compliance, how compliant were these children, what was the dropout rate? Really no different with this study compared to any other study. So the answer came when we actually looked at the food records of what these kids were doing compared to food records in other studies. And something that's sort of been out there in a lot of the literature and probably why they think the low glycemic ratio diet seems to work is, well, maybe it's that they're having less carbs, less calories. Not true. Okay. If anything, believe it or not, okay, we actually looked at their carbs, they were really doing about 15 grams of carbs, even though we told them to do 10, and that was statistically higher. So 15 was no worse than 10, even though one study said 20 was worse than 10. There's really no difference in carbs between these two studies. A lot of the basic scientists believe that the ketogenic diet may work in calorie restriction. That also was untrue. So these children had uh, 2,200 mean calories per day compared to 1,500 in other Atkins studies. So they were eating almost 50% more calories in this study than they were in the other study. So the answer, fat. So when you look at their fat intake, it was dramatically higher. The highest statistical value was in how much fat they were eating. And keto cal, that 60 gram shake is about 40 grams of fat. But the mean increase in their fat was 80 grams. So they were, even though they were having more keto cal, they still were eating more fat than they were on the modified Atkins diet before. My dietitian thinks this is kind of like an internet effect, that families are maybe getting better at doing the modified Atkins diet and mimicking the ketogenic diet. Their ratio in this study was about a 1.8 to 1. So better than the 1 to 1 we've seen in the modified Atkins diet before. So some very interesting clues from this study, even though that kind of wasn't the main purpose, that at least in my opinion, that probably these diets work by high fat, that sort of giving more fat seems to be what is making them work the best. Some interesting clues. Okay, we're doing great. So in the time remaining, I'm going to get a little bit philosophical, talk about where I think the modified Atkins diet may be going in the next five to ten years, and some very interesting things that are already starting to uh, unfold. So one thing that has come up is, that, well, you know, if this is an easier therapy, a less restrictive therapy, an outpatient-initiated therapy, maybe this would be a reasonable first-line option, okay, before trying medications. To tell a family, and I know there are many families here, I'm going to do the ketogenic diet for your child who just started having epilepsy. In certain situations, that you can do that. If they're having very bad seizures, infantile spasms, as Elizabeth mentioned, right from the get-go, they'll buy in. But if you're having one, two seizures a week, most of them aren't interested. They'll want to try medicine. I'm not sure that's inappropriate. But in some situations, maybe, where they'd say, well, could we try this Atkins diet? It does not mean coming into the hospital. This might be a reasonable first-line therapy. People are starting to talk about that. 
The other thing that's sort of a hot topic in the ketogenic diet community is the use of diets for things other than epilepsy. Uh, it's becoming a very uh, interesting idea, using it for Alzheimer's disease, autism, ALS. Uh, but some of the other conditions that are maybe not as severe, migraines, uh, Tourette's has been talked about, narcolepsy, you know, is it really something that with migraines, even though migraines can be pretty awful, you'd be willing to come into the hospital for a four-day admission for the ketogenic diet? Uh, probably not, okay? But the migraines with a story like that for the Atkins diet might be a reasonable option. Another thing that we're already starting to do is transition some of our long-term keto kids who've been on the diet for five, six years, and we've transitioned them over to the uh, modified Atkins diet. We're doing this more and more. I hear about this in other countries uh, quite a bit more and more. Uh, the other thing that I think is a very interesting topic is using it for perhaps a little less severe epilepsies. Childhood absence epilepsy, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, which almost always responds to medicine, but not always. And there are some kids with absence epilepsy who can be extremely intractable, failing multiple medicines. This is an epilepsy that usually, almost always, will go away in puberty. And a lot of neurologists will say, I'm not going to put your child on a ketogenic diet. It's too strict, perhaps, of a therapy for such a relatively less severe epilepsy, even though they may be suffering with lots and lots of seizures. So we've actually seen a huge explosion in interest in the modified Atkins diet for absence epilepsy and some of these less severe epilepsies traditionally not offered the ketogenic diet before. One of my favorite patients is a little girl named Elian who's from Ottawa, who actually flies to see me. And they sent me this in the, just to kind of rub it in in the hockey uh, uniform that she wears. Totally normal girl, doing wonderful, seizure-free with absence epilepsy. She had failed ethosuximide and valproate and lamotrigine, and we put her on the Atkins diet, and she's doing very well and playing better hockey than probably my daughter can play. <laughs> Almost definitely. Another interesting aspect and where I think, again, the modified Atkins diet may be heading in the next five years is for adults. Uh, this was our study that was published in 2007, where in person we brought in adults, put them on the modified Atkins diet. Again, traditionally not offered the ketogenic diet as a perhaps too restrictive option, although there have been some studies looking at the ketogenic diet in adults, even going back to 1930. So we're actually interested in the Atkins diet, although as Margaret and others have mentioned, it's not always catching on around the world. There are some centers uh, in Europe that are starting to look at the Atkins diet for adults and have published a bit on it too, but it's sort of been a little slower than for children in terms of uptake and interest. Um, but we're interested in it. We actually are finishing up a study uh, for US patients who email to try to see in a proof of principle idea, can it be done by the internet with email contact only? Uh, in July, we're actually about to start uh, an actual in-person adult epilepsy diet center at Johns Hopkins. I found an adult neurologist interested. It took me four years. Um, but she's interested, so she's going to actually be the head of the adult clinic, and I will help her and support her, and that's going to start in July. And then my last thing, I'll kind of start it with a case. I'm going to wrap up with a case. Elizabeth may have heard about this boy before. This is a little boy named Emilio. Emilio has intractable seizures, and this is his MRI scan. He suffered at birth, uh, unfortunately, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, brain damage at birth. Uh, had intractable seizures uh, starting at about six months of age. Uh, was on valproate, clobazam, and phenobarbital with very poor control of seizures. Was having about 50 tonic sort of drop sort of stiffening seizures per day. Um, there was no dietitian around. He had a lot of trouble financially paying for medications. Labs also were a big problem in terms of checking lab work. So a big problem for sort of trying to get this child to diet. But I was contacted, I'm often contacted by neurologists via email. Said, what do you think about the ketogenic diet for this child? I said, makes sense. It seems like a reasonable situation in which you try the ketogenic diet. And he says, well, Eric, I've got no dietitian. They can't pay for labs. And he lives in rural Honduras. And this was actually a neurologist who's a missionary also and goes down to Honduras. And I said, oh my god, how, I don't know how you could do the ketogenic diet for this family. He said, well, what about the Atkins diet? So what we did is we actually translated some of the modified Atkins diet materials, this was a few years ago, into Spanish. And this mother was able to figure out how to do it. He's now down from about 70 a day to one a day. Uh, he's been on the modified Atkins diet for two years. We actually did a cost analysis. We, we published this as a case report. And actually in Honduran Limpuras, I think it is, he's saving about five Canadian US dollars per day because of less medicine, but the food is definitely more expensive than the food he was eating before. Um, and he's just on Valproate alone, and this mother is actually starting to teach it to other families in Honduras. And this may be something uh, that the modified Atkins diet might fill a specific niche for. If you look at 
epilepsy in the world, the developing world, has about 97% of the epilepsy. So centers like India, um, some parts of China are starting to take interest in the modified Atkins diet, uh, where the ketogenic diet is an impossibility. And to wrap up, finished. Hopefully I've convinced you and I'm available for questions as well that the modified Atkins diet is a good tool to have. It's something that we use in conjunction with the ketogenic diet. I don't think it will replace it, but it's something side by side that can be very helpful for certain select situations. Uh, very good data that that first month matters and giving perhaps ketocal in the first month is now what we're recommending. It seems to again boost the efficacy, uh, probably again due to the high fat content of it. Uh, ideal populations are really, I think, where we're heading in the next five years. Adults, perhaps developing countries, maybe first-line use as well, uh, and maybe as well some non-epilepsy uses uh, may be interesting and perhaps useful for the modified Atkins diet. I think we need to do give credit where credit is due, and again, Nutricia helped pay for that modified Atkins <laughs> keto-cal study, and I thank them. Uh, there's uh, Susie and Anita, uh, Raylene Butler from England, who is a real big part of uh, designing the study as well, and uh, Steve Yaniselli. Uh, and then our ketogenic diet team as well, as similar to Elizabeth, we are a team. Uh, as I often say when I'm lecturing, they're the ones doing the work while I'm off traveling, especially my dietitian. so I highlight them. And Jennifer Dorward, who I have in bold, is actually our modified Atkins dietitian, uh, who's uh, largely responsible for a lot of the work you've seen here today. If you're really interested, and you probably hear more about this today in the ketogenic and modified Atkins diet, come to Edinburgh in October. So we had our first international ketogenic diet seminar conference in Phoenix, Arizona uh, two years ago, and then this is now going to be the second one uh, this October in Edinburgh. And this sort of nice picture, as you can see here behind, of the castle that you can tour. Thank you.